All right, we're working back on the international again. And you know, we just finished the blank canvas for the roll pan and basically how the tailgate's gonna be. It would make sense to keep working on the roll pan, but you know, I have the attention span of Dory from Finding Nemo. So I think what we're actually gonna do is work on the running boards. Now, hold on now, I know what you're gonna say. You can't do the running boards without finishing the front end, the cab work, all that stuff, and I know, but they're not the running boards you think I'm talking about. See, I'm talking about the little running boards, the little guys that go right there. And right here, kind of like little steps to get inside. It's really easy to do, you know? Shouldn't take too long for two of those guys. Plus, after, we can even mount the lights. That would look pretty neat. So that's the plan. Let's get working on two little tiny running boards. Welcome to Iowa Stable Run. just a little bit. I didn't show you guys me tracing this out and cutting it and a whole bunch of stuff, but the general idea is I'm going to make this piece here and then we're going to weld strips around all the corners. It'll be kind of like a recessed in piece almost. That guy's going to go kind of like this. Kind of goes on like so. Somewhere around there. So you can step on it. That's basically what it is. It's a glorified step at the end of the day. But that way we'll have running boards front to back eventually, and we'll even have the little garnish steps here at the back. I think that's going to look pretty good. We'll put the light at the top. So yeah, that's the plan. I'm going to cut this guy out of steel. We're going to do one at a time, just in case of small differences here and there, because, you know, we hand-built this truck, so <laughs> accuracy might be a couple football fields, or it might be a couple millimeters. It depends on how many feet you go. You know how it is. So I'm going to cut this guy out, nice easy shape, and then we'll come right back. You know, one good thing about having the tailgate done right now is it's like a perfectly good workstation to work off of. I'll be that. Awesome. So, just grab the old piece of steel here. Now I'm using this heavy wall steel here. And the main reason is because this back step isn't going to have a bottom brace. Like the main running boards, they have three or four big, like, eighth-inch steel braces underneath. This guy's not going to have that. It's just going to have a couple bolts going into the fender, a couple bolts going inside the bed. So its structure itself has to be able to handle my weight, and it's a relatively small piece. So that's why we're going with something like that. So let me cut him out. And then we'll kind of fine tune it over there. Then I just gotta add the edges. All right, so there's our unfinished chunk. And again, he's gonna kind of come around here and mend on that. I think that's gonna turn out pretty darn good. So I kind of think. Height-wise, something like that's not too bad. Pretty far down low. But that's not bad either. I think if we go a little, like somewhere right there, like that, modify my shape just a tiny, tiny bit, and we're all be hunky-dory. So what I'm going to do now is basically use those little scrap bits there. And we're gonna run a bead across, basically make a flange and a flange on this side. We'll leave this guy bare here because I might do a pipe if I can. We're gonna have to wait and see on that one. So yeah, I'll do, I don't know, we'll say an inch. Well, you know what? If we go deeper on that, I can add a gusset underneath. I think that's a good plan. That way we can add a gusset underneath and make it nice and strong. So, two inch should be okay. Two inch all around. We'll be sitting right there. So it's looking like I'm gonna need 10 and a quarter on one side. And then, kinda walk this guy down here. So if I do 16, I could actually hammer it over and loop the thing. 
I don't think that's a bad idea. beat that guy in on this side a little bit more so it has to angle in but we should be all true after that oh yeah you can't go wrong with that i think that looks pretty darn good we're gonna have to basically cut it just a little bit but i can do that that's not a big deal so what i'm gonna do I'm going to mark this guy up, figure out where I can drill my holes. But once we drill our holes, we should be pretty much ready to rock and roll. If fellas wanted to know what I use for my lines, usually it's just this little tiny shop laser. It goes across and then I chalk over it and then we're all hunky-dory. Or I run a seam down it and we're all hunky-dory. But that way I can do a huge eight foot section and make sure that it's all nice and squared up. All right, so there's V1 without the cross support. And as you can see, we got a little bit of an overhang. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut that guy, cut along this outer seam. I think I want it fatter than more sleek. I think fatter is gonna look good for what we want this to actually be. So I'm gonna follow along my line here, cut all that extra meat off. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the other one we cut up. Or no, we didn't cut it up yet. That one's for the other one. We're gonna cut one of these and plate the entire thing on that side as well. That way it's super strong. We might even have to add a gusset or something on the inside, haven't decided yet. But I won't try to step on it until that outer edge is on. And then we can kind of see what the deflection is on camera afterwards. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave it on the truck. We're gonna basically cut that guy off right there and then bend up a new piece. Lickety split. Again, what I'm doing, I'm measuring out inch and a half, and then on the other end, inch and a half, because that is my little border that I put along the whole bottom edge. We got to cut inch and a half out of this, and then we're going to wrap the same thing on that guy. Wrap them up. Should turn out pretty good. Jeez, I'm bad for that. I cut out this strip here, basically off that inch and a half by, I don't know. We don't really care about the length right now, but the idea is we're going to match this guy back up to this, loop him around, we'll cut it, and that will give us basically our general strength to this. Yeah, that's the plan anyway. All right, so that's what we got going on there. It's pretty strong for what it is. I still gotta add that extra bolt inside, but I wanna get rid of some of that. Well, honestly, there's no, there's no real problem wrong with it, but if it gets slippery, like wet, you might slide off this thing if you go to step on it. So what I'm kind of thinking is, where did I put that rod? Ah, yes, found it. What I'm kind of thinking is we're laying this rod in here, I'm doing like three stages, Kind of like that it'll add some grip to this guy that way when you go to step on it you won't slide right off if it's wet i think that's a good idea so what i'm gonna do the more seam welding we can do with the on the truck the better so i'm gonna run the seam welder 
right across through here. Finish up the seam welding on this guy. Maybe not right there in that corner. Don't want it to stick to the fender. Seam weld that, and then I'm gonna cut this guy to length, like so. And again, get like three rows on it. Should be all good. Alright, so now it's pretty much all done up on the truck. I gotta unbolt the entire thing and do the finish welding. Back side, front side, that side, whole bunch of stuff. And I still got one extra bolt hole I have to drill. So good stuff. Lots of extra little bit of work, but keeping the ball moving. So let me take this guy off and then we'll finish weld it, drill our holes, and then we can put it right back on the truck. All right, so this guy's pretty much done, short of wire wheeling to get all the little tiny spigots off and everything. But the reason we put these here again, if you missed it, is if this gets wet, right, a smooth surface wet is a slippery surface. This is how it is. So we put these guys in here. It also reinforces that plate pretty nice, but your boots will be able to grab hold of that guy. Should be pretty good. And again, this truck's going to be primarily, you know, a summer toy, but... I have plans for it, and it has to be able to sustain all weather. So I'm even talking winter in some cases. So we need this guy to be a non-slip surface. That's going to work out just great. So now we got to basically replicate that corner for that corner. Yeah, I got my hand in the right way. Yeah, that side. We got to basically do that guy on that side. Small differences, but not a lot. So yeah. let's get to work. We got the, this is the side for that one, and this is why I never made Two of the exact same copies from the get-go, just mirrored. Main reason why this fender is different enough from that fender, just because of how we made it, you know, there's small tweaks here and there. So if I flip this guy upside down, I don't know if you guys can see that. Over here is fine, over here is fine, but we have to extend this guy in a little bit, more like a crescent shape than anything. But length and everything's okay, but I just gotta extend that guy right there. So this shape is just slightly, slightly different than the other side, but it's almost imperceptible. So that's okay by me, definitely. It's just an old truck. So what we're going to do is basically copy this. Looks like add an extra inch and a quarter on one side. And this quarter inch there, and it should be pretty darn good. All right, so we got our new modified shape traced out. So what I'm gonna do now is basically just cut this guy out and we're gonna form fit it to that fender like we did that piece. And then we can do, you know, our outer edges afterwards. But we need this main piece to fit pretty much the way it's going to at the very beginning. So let's get right at that. So we got the rough cut of this piece here. Fits in like a glove, no real complaints from it. Now we made it undersized just a little bit because obviously when we add that outer piece, that lip that goes around the entire border, it's gonna come out to somewhere around right, right there, roughly, give or take a little bit. So it should be pretty good. That's our canvas. So we're gonna do the same thing, inch and a half perimeter all the way around that guy. And then we can drill our holes and bolt her up. Now, what I have to do
do in this instance, I have to rip a line inch and a half all the way down this fella. I've shown you guys how to do it with the laser, but you can do it just simply with a tape measure if you know that you have a true straight edge on this side. And obviously I do on this guy. So you put your tape there, find your inch and a half, and put your chalk or your scribing device, whatever you're using, right on the end. Take that guy all the way out here. Just like so. Goes all the way to that. Find your inch and a half, and what you're gonna do, hold them together, and you're using the tape to guide it. Just like so. Perfect inch and a half all the way down. So, I'm just gonna continue this line with two straight edge. Like so. Like so. That gives me my inch and a half perfectly on this side, exactly what I want, so now I can just cut right through. All right, so it's pretty much all finished welded up now. Now what we have to do is our drill our holes. We also have to add our, uh, our anti-slip traction type dealies onto this guy. But right now, let's just see how it fits. Oh yeah, that's gonna look some good. Yes, sir. That blends in very nice. Very, very nice indeed. So we gotta drill our holes. We gotta add our anti-slip. But that's not so bad but so we got to drill our holes and we got to add, add our anti-slip piece basically that guy right there so might as well get at it go guys got both of the side steps on the back corner side steps i think they turned out pretty darn nice now we made this one slightly different right here and i'll show you why we're going to address this at a later date it's a little bit shorter because in my mind i was kind of thinking about my rear tail lights i think we're going to make them mounted onto the rear fenders but i want a reverse light so i added this extra little bit of chunk i think we're going to add the reverse light right down here and then it'll flush mount with the rest of it that's why this one's different if not if i don't want to do that i can just span that guy back out but i think that's going to be the plan but no i think they turned out quite quite good tell you so, honest truth now that we've done the rear rearmost running boards the little tiny quarter guys 
we might as well do a complete 180 and start working on these mirrors. Now, I put these guys up here for fun, just as a joke. But trust me, these are not the mirrors that are going on the truck. At least not entirely. These mirrors right here, if you guys don't know, these are just universal tow mirrors. They're actually pretty dated. They were in an old truck that I parted out long, long time ago. But I had a complete set just laying in the cab, and I've kept them for this long. Well, I think what we're going to do is basically take the mirror end off, because it's actually a pretty good mirror. It's all steel, it's chrome-plated, that kind of stuff. None of the glass is broken. Take that guy out, and I think we're going to make our own... Let me throw that guy back on there, roughly. I think we're going to make our own trucker style mirror like an old like a baby west coast something like that i think that's going to fit this truck very nicely so again that's kind of what it looks like again kind of dodge-esque you know got the old moose antlers on it but again they're not really what i want not like that so what i'm kind of thinking is doing a bar because this is the original mirror mount came out to here somewhere around there come out to about roughly where my hand is or maybe even at an angle, come up to here, like that, and like that, and it will tie into this, basically. Then, we'll take this mirror off, and he will get bolted kind of center line onto that guy. So what I ended up doing is bending up a brake line, just generality speaking. That gives me a guide, basically, so I can make it out of heavy wall steel. This isn't the mirror, this is just a guide. So, idea is, poke kind of in there, I'll make two plates, one at the top and one at the bottom. Kind of hang like that. See if I can get it straight there. There we go. And then this guy will locate somewhere around here-ish. Maybe right there. Kind of straight in line with that. And then I can use the actual dial on this to angle this guy back and forth. All that kind of stuff. I'm also thinking about adding a small little protection bar that comes across right here. Old trucks used to have it. This guy likely won't need it but I think it would look pretty cool. All right, so I reviewed the footage, wasn't exactly happy with how things were going, at least on that. So this is my new design. It'll be something like that. More symmetrical on both sides instead of being up and down. Mirrors more placed in here. I still plan on doing the structure, the, the, the safety piece of the mirror that comes around. But I think that's a lot better, to tell you the honest truth. I'll have to look at it in camera, but if that's how we're gonna go about it, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go to the big shop, I'm gonna bend up a new piece of this, two of them, and then we can make our own attachment points here and all that stuff, that's not a big problem. And then we can bolt our mirrors on. It's gonna be pretty all sweet. All right, so we're here at the big shop. What we're gonna be doing is basically taking this guy, his general shape, obviously making some things more square than they are on this, but using this guy as a guide, some thick, thick round bar, you know, thick in general. I would wanna use round tube, but we don't have any round tube in stock. So round bar it's gonna be. They're gonna be very overbuilt for what they are, especially because they're just mirrors. But you know what? If you bang your head into them, you're gonna break your head before you break the mirror, I guess. So let's get at it. I've got to measure this guy up, start cutting them up in round bar. We need two slates, basically. We're over at the table. I got my test mirror or whatever side mirror this is. I got my blank and then I got my two rods. So what we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna take my mirror, I'm gonna trace them out on the table, just with my chalk. And that gives me a baseline that I can kind of work around. So this guy's never gonna be in contact with the parts. He can go off to the side. So again, I kind of laid it out again. Here's our mirror, here's our mold blank whatever you want to call it this is going to be basically center line on the mirror i'm going to weld a little tab onto it and this right here represents these guys once they're bent so it'll be kind of long like that and then i'm thinking about doing a mirror protector too that will kind of span out and go around the entire circumference of it i think that would look pretty darn sick especially for the old truck so what i'm going to do first is get my center line on both of my rods they should be both 32 inches i believe let's double check that yeah 32 inches so we're gonna go 17 inches on both just gain my center line that's all what i want and since they're the same i can go off both if i just butt them together there so center line of 32 
that's what we're going off. Of. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna measure off our outline of our mirror. Looks like seven and three quarter ish. So what's half of seven and three quarter? Three, no, no, no. three and three, no, three and seven eighths, somewhere around there. We'll double check to kind of off of our mirror just for reference. Three and seven eighths puts us right there. Oh yeah, that's center line. So we're gonna go three and seven eighths for our first bend out on both of these bars. Just to be clear, we're on the same page. This middle section right here holds the mirror. So if we get our mirror again, we bring him here, that middle section right there holds on to our mirror, just like so. And again, he'll be kind of in the middle of the entire thing. So just kind of like that. These are gonna be bent. I believe it's like a 45, something like that, but I can just kind of mark it off of this. Those are gonna be bent, same way, and then we only have another bend to do for straight in. All right, so I tried the big bender on a scrap piece, same diameter. It will bend it, but it leaves these horrible looking square marks on it. So we're gonna to elect to use the torch on this. I think the torch is gonna give us a much better finished product at the end of the day, especially if I'm gonna be seeing the damn thing. Well, I'm driving. So, what we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna make out a quick chop grid here. Just kind of, you know what, I can likely move him out of the way. There we go, nah, well that kind of worked, whatever. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna basically make 245s off of this chop grid, and then I can heat up these guys on the points, and we can bend them to that grid. I think that's gonna work out pretty good. Well, in the vise and then fine tune it. That's the idea anyway. that will carry on pretty much until it touches the truck. So, I can get rid of these, get rid of those, get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you, and get rid of our mirror decoy. And that's what we're left with. That little guy right there. So what we're gonna do, we have four bends total to do on the torch with this guy. We're gonna do these initial ones, get that so that it travels fine. And then we just got to do these corner ones. Get them all the same. And then after that, then we can do the little guard piece that I want to do. I've got this guy in the vise. And we're just going to make sure that we're lined up fine on both. And then we can bend it out. So I got to heat this guy up because we're never going to be bending this guy by hand normally. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you guys noticed, but first iteration of Isle Stable Garage hats, they're not in yet. This is just kind of a test sample. We're doing a couple changes behind the scenes on it, if you guys didn't know. Whenever the changed ones comes in, these guys are gonna go live. But for right now, still not live yet. That's what we got going on. Again, here's our little diagram or whatever you want to call it put that guy up there he lines up pretty darn good especially for what we need so let me just bang that guy out same thing on that one when i get that guy done we'll come right back got my two main pieces done up. So now what we have to do is make our mounted hardware for our mirror, basically. I'm just taking these guys right here. If you can notice it's chalked out. I'm basically gonna grind that all off and then we're gonna poke a hole right in the center. And then basically that mirror is just gonna bolt directly to that from the back side. That's gonna set that guy up. I have another one right here. When he's done, I'm just going to basically trace this guy out on this piece. That way they're basically the exact same. That should be okay. And then we're just going to basically lay a nice little strip of weld on that. And it's just going to hold the mirror on plenty strong. I'm not worried about it at all. Alright, 
so generality speaking, that's kind of what it's going to be looking like. Not too shabby at all. And we have basically all of our adjustment can be on our mirror end, so that guy can stay pretty much straight. All right, so what I got here, I got four tabs basically, and I'll let you know what we're gonna do in a second, how they're gonna incorporate to here, but I have to drill the holes. Two quarter inch holes here, quarter inch hole there. Quarter inch, quarter inch, I got, you know, 12 holes, I guess, all said and done. So I'm just going to chalk them up in the vise, go to town on them with the drill bit, and then after I can kind of show you what we're going to be doing. That's pretty much it for these guys, I would say. They're not too shabby, not too bad. I think they turned out pretty darn good. So I'll see you guys back at the barn. So we're back in the barn, obviously. We got our mirror bracket, and as you can see, it needs to be adjusted just a little bit. Let me close this door and you'll see exactly what I mean. But as you can see, the whole mirror assembly has to be adjusted. It has to be basically brought in, especially here on the bottom. It's not lined up square or anything like that. So now we got to go about mounting this guy and you know quite simply what we have to do this guy gets put on short sides here long sides here levels it out nicely now we run into a couple issues as you normally you know if you wanted to do something like this you could bolt it on we're not going to be able to bolt this guy on just because we can't get to the back so what I'm often to do is use these things called rib nuts basically it's a collapsible nut you find them a lot on barbecues and stuff like that and you drill a hole push this guy in squish them and basically it grabs the steel holds it tight i'm just going to line this guy up the best i can find out the spot i want we're going to go off the old mounting holes basically again it's always fun drilling into your you know pristine door that you already fixed Oh, she's been there. All right, so we're going to drill right through. You know what after a little bit of consideration i've been looking at this door and it's actually quite thin for what it is and you know i kind of really want these mirrors and i think the only way to do it is if we weld the brackets to the door not ideal but you got to remember at the end of the day it's just a little bit of steel work if we don't like them we just cut them off and re-weld it and grind it down so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug these holes up that I drilled, ground, grind them down. And then we're going to weld this guy onto this door. Just the brackets. That way it's just the little two brackets that will be on the door permanently. And we can undo basically the main attachment bolt on this guy and we'll have no issues there. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to detach that completely. Let me weld that guy up real quick. We'll hit him with some flapper wheel and then we'll weld that guy direct. Well, there you go, fellas. That's kind of what it looks like. All things considered, I think it turned out pretty darn good. Well, there you 
you go. That's what she's looking like. Obviously, they're not adjusted, so obviously they're not in their exact spots that you'll have when they're driving, but they're just kind of sitting there. I quite like it. Kind of gives it an old truck vibe. I guess it really didn't need an old truck vibe. It is an old truck, you know what I mean? It kind of gives it an old farm truck vibe, I should say. But yeah, I can come over, I can put my weight on them. Pretty good, not too bad. It's about as best as we're gonna get without having a solid main mount or a brace or something. We might add- And then over here, as you guys saw, I just did some final adjustments to the mirrors today. They turned out pretty darn slick. No, can't go wrong with that at all. I well, quite there you like go, it. fellas. We basically got the mirrors done and we got those quarter little running boards done. I think it dresses up the truck quite, quite nice. Now, the next thing that we're gonna be tackling is either gonna be up front or I got some more stuff at the back end. I'm kind of wanna keep plugging away at the back end. I got a vision in my head and I don't really wanna let it go. So. Likely to be back there, but you never know. Maybe we'll start up here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and we'll catch you very, very soon on the next episode. See you guys.